All right, so anterior cruciate. This is the big one. Okay. This is a lot of times where people are getting the surgeries. And, and, and I did my ACL too at the same time. And, but I didn't, didn't need to have surgery on it because I didn't completely tear it. Okay, so the anterior cruciate, again, is going to limit this kind of motion. So a couple things the way it can happen is that you can hit the proximal tibia, can get hit from behind, forcing it out like this. Okay. Another thing that can happen is you can get a blow to the front of the knee, forcing it into hyperextension. So what that's going to do, basically, it's going back like this and it pops the ACL there. Okay. And then the anterior cruciate is significant is that it's the one knee ligament that you can injure by just landing down onto the knee and falling, and then it'll just give that way. Whereas usually the other ones you need a blow from the side or from the front or the back to stretch the ligament. But the anterior cruciate, if somebody says, well, I was jumping up and I came down and landed and I felt my knee buckle and I felt something pop, you're going to most likely expect the anterior cruciate with that. So again, the things that are going to cause the ACL is a direct blow to the anterior knee causing hyperextension, and then you may or may not have some valgus to go along with that. Or you can have a non-contact impact where they're landing down onto the leg, and then it just kind of buckles, and there's one of the videos that will show that later too. And then again, like I said, the ACL is going to go along with what other two structures? Metaplateral medial meniscus. Okay, so now this is the normal test of a normal knee. When you're pulling forward, it's for the anterior cruciate. When you're pushing back, it's for the posterior cruciate. So I'll click that again. So in this case, they're pulling forward and back, kind of putting the two tests together. But technically, if you're going to do the anterior cruciate, then you're going to be pulling forward like this, and then the posterior cruciate, you're pushing back. So then basically, here's all the different clinical things. Again, they're going to say that they either got hit to the knee, or they landed on the knee, and they felt the knee give way. But when it's a knee sprain, a lot of times they're going to feel something moving or popping in the knee, something's going to give way. And then there's so the special test, the anterior drawer test, where you're pulling forward like that. There's also another one, and then that's the one that's added onto that extra sheet, the latchment test, where instead of having the anterior cruciate where you're in this position and you're pulling forward like that, the knee is just in a little bit of flexion, and then you're pulling up like this. Actually, usually you do it this way here. So you're doing it in a different position of knee flexion. And then the slocum test, has to do with variations. Like I said, there's going to be different things we're going to do with rotating the knee. So that's going to test different instabilities of the knee. Like when we talked before about the shoulder, you have different directions of instability. You can have multi-directional instability. A similar kind of thing can happen in the knee where you can have anterolateral instability. I mean, I'm sorry, anterior medial instability and then anterolateral instability. And that has to do with turning the knee. And when we get into the special test, we'll talk more about that. But the anterior and posterior drawer is just straight back forward and straight back. And then slocums has to do with applying some rotation while you do the forward and back. Okay, this video is a little bit slow, but I think it's, yeah, this person right here. They come down right here. Wow. Yeah, the, this thing is a little bit jerky because this laptop's not all that great. But as you watch, it just kind of goes. <laughs> What's happening is that knee is just buckling. Okay. If anybody wants to see that again later, we'll play it again later. Not everybody wants to see those kinds of things. <laughs> so then now the posterior cruciate. Again, that has to do with the posterior cruciate limits posterior movement of the tibia in relation to the femur. So some type of a blow, like 
falling down onto the flexed knee like this. So some type of impact that's going to go like this and force the tibia posterior. And then also, you know, you can see falling, landing onto a bent knee here. Again, this is a typical kind of thing they're going to say, I felt something pop. And I felt my knee kind of give way and move. So, you know, again, sometimes if you have a bad enough injury, you can have both the anterior and the posterior cruciate. Um, and I remember when I was working in the athletic training room, one of the um, football practice, the person you know, did their posterior cruciate, and the person is laying onto the table with the knee bent like that, and basically you can just see that the front part of the tibial con is just pushed back. It's like the knee should be like that, except it's sitting like this. So this part, just while they were just sitting there, this was just shifted posterior. So you can just look at the alignment of the knee and tell what's going on there. So again, this is that same basic test where when you pull forward, you're testing the anterior cruciate. When you push back, you're testing the posterior cruciates. Later on, you'll see the videos of how it's not supposed to look. And then, so the posterior drawer test is where you're pressing back like this, and then the Houston's is where you're adding the variations of the rotation to stretch different parts of the posterior part of the joint capsule. When you're pushing backwards like this, when you're pushing this way, you're stretching the posterior part of the joint capsule. When you internally rotate, you're stressing more of the medial part of the joint capsule on the backside. When you externally rotate, you're stressing more of the lateral part. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the actual tests. Okay, so we're still on the inert tissues, we're talking about the joint capsule. Now, the joint capsule on the back part, there's various different named ligaments that cover the back part of the joint, and you can have tears or openings in that capsule on the back. And what that is, is the Baker cyst is where the synovial lining or the joint membrane is herniating through an opening in the capsule on the back part of the knee. So basically, you'll have these synovial fluid bulging back out on the back side of the knee. So it's like, it's, it's like a hernia, basically. You feel something bulging on the back side of the knee. It's not going to be a hard, bony prominence. It's going to be some soft tissue swelling that's squeezing out the back side of the knee. So this is something like that. So it's just a herniation through the weakened posterior joint capsule. So it may be secondary to some other knee injury. You know, if you're tearing <coughs> some other structures and you happen to tear part of the posterior capsule, then some of that fluid is going to bulge out. It may have some pain. There may not be any pain. So basically, you're going to feel something bulging out in the back there. The um, range of motion is probably going to be normal, but if you have a big enough bulge on the back there when you go to flex the knee, it's going to put pressure on the back side there, so you may have some pain with that. It's not really going to affect the nerve tissue, and there's not really a special test for that. How do you stress the posterior like what, what kind of There could be some rotation carried to it, uh, maybe some hyperextension, something like that. 